All right, so now we're gonna jump into another section here. Um, automation made easy. So we wanna talk a little bit about automation and this is kind of where we get into some uh, better points of using Postman. Uh, and we've, you know, we've covered all the basics, all the simple stuff you can do. I think uh, most people um, that was, you know, kind of rehash of things you already knew or things you've done before. But we had a lot of great questions at the break, which was really good. So I think we're touching on some good points as well. So why do we automate our tests, right? That's, that's kind of one of the questions I think a lot of people ask, especially around APIs. So there's ROI and value. So we're building these tests. Um, it's time consuming, right? As we all know. Uh, I think most people here are in the quality space. Writing these tests can sometimes be very time consuming. Um, and it's a significant investment for a company, right? So we want to make sure that the payback is there. So that's kind of a long term uh, approach. So the spend is up front, the time is up front, but it pays off in the long run because you're not sitting there clicking buttons saying, hey, I tested this, right? Every time there's something new that comes out, you can go get a coffee, hit run, walk away, right? It's, it's a beautiful thing. I love it, personally. Uh, reusability is another thing as well, right? So you can write the test once and reuse them over and over again. Um, we can run them in different environments, uh, different machines, things like that. So there's a lot of power in the reusability there, um, especially when you get into really complex systems, upgrades, A to B testing, things like that. It's a really good thing to have. <clears throat> reliability. Um, running these tests against the systems, you can check for that reliability. You know that the system is performing the way you want it to, uh, the way you expect it to, uh, along the parameters that have been set out from the design. Uh, and also, the bigger thing that I think a lot of people I know want to know a little bit more about is like you can build this into a CI CD process, right? So there's a ton of power there. Um, and basically, you can execute your tests 24 7 with most of the time without any intervention at all, right? It can happen when somebody does a code commit or uh, a change is made, any sort of configuration, things like that. Or you can just have them run on a schedule of some sort. So there's awesome efficiency there uh, in, in a CI CD pipeline. So you can do all this with Postman. And we're going to show you a little bit about how to do that. So let's do like an overview of what we're going to talk a little bit about here uh, in this. So we want to start by talking about the collection runner. You know, what is it? What can you do with it? And then we're going to get into Newman, which I know some people came up and talked to us at the break about Newman. So I know some people know a little bit about it, but I think they want to understand better how they can unlock the power. So we're going to talk about how you can use Newman. Uh, for your automation, and then CI, CD, and like I say, this is something I know a lot of people want to know a little bit more about, and I see some faces here from um, people that were actually at a talk I gave um, a month or so ago uh, in our office here as well, and had some really great questions, so that'll be good, hopefully. So the collection runner. First up, you know, what is it, right? So this is kind of the starting point of where your automation comes together. This is where you've created multiple requests, uh, you know, you, you just have a whole bunch of them put together and you want to execute them uh, as, a, you know, as a whole. Some would argue maybe it's not proper automation, but you basically like your, collection, your collection is everything that you want to run. It, there's a bit of manual intervention here, um, but it you know, puts all our requests together and it's the start of things, right? It's the start of our requests and our tests. They can be executed sequentially, um, but they can also follow workflows, which I had some questions uh, during the break for some people about how workflows work. We don't want to get into that um, too much today. Uh, there's lots of great documentation on it uh, that you can look at, but like basically the idea is you can systematically decide how your collections are going to execute and how they're going to run based on that. And then we want to utilize a little bit of what um, we've learned in the previous section about like how you can create and pass data between requests and help facilitate your workflows. <clears throat> so we're going to do a bit of a practical exercise here. This one's really quick, um, but hey, it's hands-on. I know that's what you guys like. Um, it's super basic, but uh, we figured there was some value here. Hopefully this stuff will all show up well here. Um, our AV guys have done a fantastic job of uh, fixing up some of the stuff, the, the issues that you guys had run into um, with not being able to see things, so hats off to them. <clears throat> so first, you should hopefully have your Postman still open. So we want to navigate to the Collections tab. It's a little off. 
It looks, yeah, okay. So let me change some of the stuff. It looks a little weird up here. Um, so we're gonna click on the navigation arrow and hit run. Um, and we're also utilizing one of um, the collections that we imported earlier. I should have mentioned that sooner. So we use that PostCon 2019. Uh, everybody should have imported, hopefully. And then you're gonna have the collection runner up, right? And we wanna click on run collection name, so the blue button uh, at the bottom of the screen there. And hopefully we're not gonna take down our Postman Echo instance. If it is, then I guess some of the guys got some work to do. Uh, so once you, uh, you execute that collection, you're gonna have uh, the run results window come up here. Should be uh, 12 tests that were executed here. And you can click on the request name uh, to gather a little bit more information about these, uh, these executions and the runs. And there's other information in there like um, you know, iterations and log responses, things like that that you can get through here as well. And that's kind of it. It was super basic. I wasn't promising anything too crazy. Uh, we just basically want to show how the collection runner works and what you can gather from information from that. Now we're going to jump into Newman. Yeah, so you've, you've seen the, um, the collection run through the DUI, the runner. Um, but we want to introduce you to uh, Newman. If for people, can I, like a show of hands, who, who knows what Newman is or who has heard of Newman? That's cool. So that's a fair few people. So that's, that's a good thing. Because sometimes uh, you don't get many hands going up. But Newman essentially is the way to uh, run your collections from the command line and a way to uh, introduce uh, this into CI CD systems. So what is Newman? And this is a nice, hopefully this will uh, transition well. So basically, uh, Newman is a simple NPM package that you can install. <clears throat> and I, I want to um, preface this with the fact that we're not going to do much of a hands-on demo with Newman just because of certain constraints around it. Um, just, you know, you need to make sure you have uh, Node installed and things like that. So we kind of want to, for the sake of time, uh, avoid doing that because I feel like we could have half the class uh, <laughs> have potential issues. So uh, yeah, so it's just a simple NPM package you can install. We have great documentation on it. Um, it's very, very straightforward, which is great. Um, it operates the same as the collection runner in the Postman application for consistent execution of your collections. That is like 99.9% .9 true. We've been introducing some new stuff um, in the collection runner, which kind of brings it a little out of sync, but um, that was, it's, you know, we're hoping to have feature parity going forward here. And it's just to get this stuff out here for everybody um, because we've had a lot of asks for it. Uh, Newman has been built um, from a library from the ground up, so it can be extended to use in various ways, such as with CI CD systems. And we already talked about feature parity with the Postman app. Um, so it uh, allows collections to run the way they're executed in the Postman app, um, the same as a collection runner. And we talked about it being built as a library. And you can also have custom reporters as well, which we are going to talk about um, a little further in our final section, um, which is really good stuff. And Danny's got some really cool things he's going to show around that. So like Trent said, it's quite a difficult thing to uh, get everyone to, to, to run Newman from their, their machines, mainly because of the show of hands, it's kind of like half people would do it and the other half would uh, be installing Node, be installing Newman, and uh, we could get into a, a right mess. So um, I just wanted to go through a few things what Newman can do, but you have the ability to, after this, either come and speak to us and we'll run it through in real time, or if we point you out the documentation, you can run it through uh, that way. Um, but Newman itself, so the run, yes, sir. I like saying, sir. It's a question on runner. Yes, yes. Do you think it could be used as a, uh, as a load tester as well or a stress tester as well? I personally, I wouldn't use it that way because it wasn't designed that way. There are other tools that enable you to do that. And I don't want to say go and use that tool, but in a, in a sense of the runner, it's not designed to do that. So as much as you could pass load through that of many iterations, it won't be the most efficient thing for the job. If you want to, and it won't give you the same output of, of a, an actual dedicated load runner or a stress testing tool. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I actually had a question uh, around load testing, performance testing during the break. And, uh, you know, my response was basically what Danny said. Um, what, you know, whether you're using the collection runner or Newman itself, we don't have that, that feature uh, built in, but that is actually on our roadmap. And hopefully it won't be too long before we kind of get that going on. Chris, do you know anything about that? Like, no? Uh, I don't see anybody that can answer a question. Anyway, so we do have that on our roadmap, hopefully coming uh, very shortly, because we do know that there's kind of a deficiency uh, in our product offerings around that, and a lot of people are looking for that as a complete package, so it definitely makes sense, and we're not ignoring that. Uh, we just need to build it. But there, there is a way you can do it via Newman. It's kind of, um, and I've done this myself in practice, it's not ideal, but <laughs> you can essentially spin up multiple um, executions of Newman uh, and put it all in the shell script, so maybe you just want to, you know, hit your endpoint with you know, 10, 15, 20 executions of Newman, and you can have just this very simple collection that just like loops through and like, you know, will hit that same endpoint 20 times within that one collection, uh, and then you spawn you know, 20 instances of Newman running that exact same collection, hitting your endpoint over and over and over again. It's definitely not the proper way to do anything uh, like that, but it does kind of get results, and when I've done that in the past, it, it, it got me the outcome I was looking for. I was able to take the microservice down or get to start spitting out errors and things like that. So, it, like I say, it's it's not the best way to do it, um, but it is it is a way you can accomplish um, something like that. So, yeah, going back to uh, the slide on the screen at the moment. So, Newman comes with uh, lots of different uh, arguments and flags that you can pass into the command line. Um, if you have Newman installed, if you do Newman run uh, dash h, it will give you a list of what you can pass into there. So, similar to the the runner in the app, you could pass in an environment file and uh, point to uh, an environment to run the test against a certain thing, if it's a, a dev environment, a staging, a production environment, um, but also pass in certain things like reporters or uh, different uh, variables on the command line itself. So there's a lot of different things it can go in, into, uh, and those are kind of a list of some of the things it can do. But again, if you have it locally, you can press, uh, you can uh, select Newman run, dash H, and it'll show you on the, uh, the yeah. command line. Um, one thing I want to point out on here, I had a question during the break as well, and hopefully I can answer it right now instead of leaving it until later on today or tomorrow. Somebody's asking about timeouts uh, with Newman in the request. And here you can see that the dash dash timeout, and then you can um, pass in in milliseconds what it is. I don't I forget who it is, but I, ah, there you are, my friend. Does this answer your question, hopefully? Because um, you're asking about what the timeout is. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't work sometimes? Okay, I'd like to know more about that, so maybe we'll talk about that specifically a little later on, because I feel like maybe there's a bug or something there we need to look at. So, okay, we'll talk about that later then. So Newman itself, so Newman uh, got his name from a uh, character in Seinfeld, so Newman was the postman within Seinfeld, so Newman is the companion to a postman. Funny. I don't watch Seinfeld, so I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> I just got told, and now I'm telling you, so it's kind of like a passage of information. It's not right. You, you need to get up to speed on this. So I, we don't do that in England. Okay. Yeah, up to speed or watch Seinfeld, <laughs> as you can see from the state of our politics. <laughs> so um, on the screen, I just created a GIF just to show uh, Newman running. So what this is, um, it will cycle through again and again. It's just running uh, a Postman collection. Uh, which I've exported from the app itself. So you can export uh, the collection in lots of different ways or run it in different ways. In this occasion, I'm exporting the actual raw JSON file and just running that uh, on the command line. So some of the different screens, you should be able to see that. And then with the uh, Newman itself, it has a default CLI reporter. So the output of these checks that is going to go and run through, it will show you on the screen of what tests it's run, uh, the request uh, that's, that's been pro uh, provided in there, uh, but also the output in that summary field is what the output is of the actual uh, collection running. Well, the next one. So yeah, like I said, there's multiple different ways you can run a collection from Newman. So you can uh, share a link from within the app as well. So it's not just a case of exporting a static file every time. So by exporting the link itself, you're able to uh, update that link within the app. So if you've made changes in the app that uh, you want to run against Newman, you can just update that link and it'll run it automatically rather than exporting another JSON file putting that somewhere, pointing uh, Newman at it. So this is a good way of, of uh, running uh, an updated level, uh, collection uh, level of request. How do you get that export? Like, does it have to be to the collection? Yeah, so um, in the app itself, if you uh, go to the collection, um, where um, Trent mentioned where you run the, the, 
the, the collection runner from. Within there, there's a section that says uh, share collection. And then on there, there's a couple of uh, um, options available to you. It's the far right one. So that will generate a link for you. And that, that link will be able to uh, run against Numen itself. So yeah, like I mentioned before, there's lots of different aspects of uh, a Numen and different things you can pass into the command line. So this, again, is another uh, uh, run through uh, just using um, an environment file. So in this occasion, I've run the request using a certain environment variable, but the second time, because I haven't passed that variable in, it's then it's gonna cause lots of failures because it doesn't really know where to point at. So again, that's kind of like passing uh, an environment file in, but, but just a, from a, a command line argument sense. So this is just what, one way of showing you that you can add these things to the command line. So if you are hooking up to a CI, CD system, um, you have the ability to run whatever command you, uh, you want within there and manipulate whatever you want uh, within your collection and have Newman run that. All right, so this is kind of, I think, an area where people really want to see. <clears throat> so we want to talk a little bit about the CI, CD uh, pipeline and process. Uh, that's not showing there. there we go. So Newman can run um, on most of the popular frameworks that are out there, you know, Jenkins, Travis, CircleCI, uh, Azure, and I've seen people do some uh, integrations with other systems that are kind of maybe some of the less popular ones. I've just kind of come across, uh, you know, different blog posts and articles and things like that. Um, but basically, you know, it, it gives us a streamlined way to execute Newman, um, and you can also do this within a Docker image, which is something we maintain as well. Um, Move on to the next part. So I'm going to do a uh, Newman and Jenkins demo. Let me switch the input over here. Perfect. So this is something I actually gave a talk about uh, a month or uh, so ago, <clears throat> and people really found it useful. So I'm going to do three demos here. So one is if the collection it resides locally uh, on your agent uh, or local machine. And then I'm also gonna pull it from our API, similar to what Danny uh, had shown in some of his uh, Newman executions. And third, I'm gonna do pulling down our, via our API and running it in a, a Docker image. So this is our local one. So for simplicity's sake, um, I'm kept this as like super basic and out of the box as you can get. So I'm running uh, Jenkins locally on my machine here. I don't have any uh, fancy plugins or anything going on here. I'm not doing any uh, you know, funny source code management or anything like that. But what I want to show you is the build actions. So this is executing the shell command just like you would do via CLI uh, command line if you're running this locally on your machine. So we're just doing Newman run, and I have my collection.json that I exported from uh, Postman in a collections folder. And I'm also adding uh, in an environment uh, file as well, so I just call it echo.json, and we'll just save it. I'm going to say build now. <clears throat> It'll be super, super quick. By the time I click on it, it has finished. And we'll look at the console output here. So what we're seeing here is it's, uh, it's executing the command just as we had in the configuration you can see here. And it's executing four uh, requests, and they're just basic tests here. So you can see that I'm just checking that the status code is 200 on all four of those requests. And we have a summary here, shows us that we have success as well. Hopefully everybody can see that. So make it bigger. Make it bigger. How big? That big. Is that, is that big enough? Like, on my screen it looks huge, so. Nice, <laughs> man. I don't know if that is even changing anything on there. But <clears throat> hopefully everybody can kind of see and give you an idea. Um, so we have our summary here. You can see that it finished. Uh, it was successful. You can see that uh, we did one iteration, four requests. There's four test scripts executed, no pre-request scripts, uh, just four simple assertions. And we have information like you know, how long it took to run, the data that was received, and then we just kind of the averages, uh, response time, and things like that. Yes? collections and folders, uh, is there a way to run them parallelly? Sorry, say that again? If we have multiple collections and folders, do we have a way to run, those, run them parallelly? So run everything within there? Yeah, yes, you should. Parallel. In, oh, in parallel? Parallel. Uh, I've never had to do it in parallel. Um, I guess you 
could um, if you built some of the functionality into um, the Jenkins job, you could run them in parallel. I can't say that I've ever done that, but I think I have seen people ask that question before. I don't know if it's on the community or not, but that's a good question, and we should look into that a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> running uh, several instances. Yep. Yes. I basically just did a script where I sent several instances with different folders to run them in parallel. Okay, so you so you've done that in that yeah. sense, right? Did, did you want to give them the mic? Like, sorry, um, what? Yeah. Did you uh, to talk about the running them in parallel? Uh, what I did was use uh, JavaScript um, to set several instances and then point each instance to a different folder and run them at the same time. Okay, so yeah, so that's, that's a perfect answer there. Thank you for that, by the way. I thought I saw somebody else with their hand. Did somebody else have a question? Yep, down in the back, I see. We've got a mic over here. Thank you. Can we talk about reports also, reporting the collection results? Run execution results? Sure, let's add another section about reports. Yeah. We actually do, we're gonna talk about reports in the next okay, section, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. I do have a couple of questions because I ran into issues there. As my company uses TeamCity and we don't have much options around TeamCity and there are so many in Jenkins, so I will wait for that, thank you. Okay, thank you. So I wanna show you the second uh, demo here, basically exactly the same as what I have done in the previous one, just out of the box, super vanilla here, but we actually, uh, I guess it's, it's hard to get everything on one screen here. <clears throat> so now we're executing three shell commands. The first one, we're going out, hitting uh, the Postman's API, and I'm pulling down the environment uh, file and just piping it into an env underscore uh, api.json file. Basically just takes the output of that API call. Don't copy that API key, by the way. <laughs> just kidding. I think I actually changed it at some point. Uh, yeah, so we're just taking that down and we're piping into a JSON file. We're doing the exact same thing um, with the collection and the collection is the same collection that we ran in the previous uh, example. As you can see here, the last thing, the execution is running you know, newman.run, and I'm just using those uh, JSON files for the collection and the environment that I created with those previous calls. And we'll build now. Should be nice and quick, yeah. There's actually really good performance. Usually I can catch it while it's still running. So you can see the output here where it made the call to our Postman API and pulled down the environment and then the collection. And there's some statistics in here as well. Uh, it tells you a little bit about it. And then we execute that exact same um, collection that we had done in the previous example. So we see the four calls that had happened, the four tests, and we also have our summary here as well with the information just like we had in the other one. Lastly, is running, getting the information via our API and then running it through a Docker image that has a Newman. So once again, just playing out of the box, vanilla build on Jenkins. So we do those same API calls to get our environment, to get our collection. Then we also have to add in another command to basically pull down the image. And uh, also I want to note that I am running Docker locally, so if you're running this on a Jenkins agent, uh, you need to make sure that that agent has Docker installed, obviously. So we pull down that, the Newman image, and then we execute the command against that Docker image. And we pass in, once again, the collection and the environment. We had a few other pieces on here, um, like reporters for CLI, and uh, the color is auto, and disable Unicode. I'm missing a plugin on my local Jenkins configuration. Like I say, I want to keep this super simple, so when we look at the results, it's gonna look a little funny, um, but still very readable. So we're gonna say build now. This one will take a few seconds longer, and we'll see if we can catch it as it's happening. Of course not. So we can see here the two previous commands where we get the environment, the collection. We pull down the latest image. Um, in this case, I have the latest image running locally. 
if I didn't, it'd be kind of like a longer um, piece here in the center that would show the status of it pulling down the image. And like I say, it's kind of a little gross, but uh, the information is there. So we run those uh, exact same four um, requests. We have the tests as well. So it's just checking if you can kind of decode in all this mess here. If the status code is 200, we're checking it on all those four. And we do have down here the summary as well. We can see that it was successful and some details around that as well. Wow. Who thinks Trent should get a plugin? I do. <clears throat> I think I need more time to get that plug in. Uh, no, they're just against our Postman Echo, so there's no authorization on our. Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought you meant on the collection it was executing. Yeah, so these. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're pulling down um, your environment or collection or anything like that that's shared, um, yeah, they are secured by an API key, so you need to create an API key and include that as part of it. That is it for that demo. So we want to switch back. Cool. So another trend, um, he's gone through an example using uh, uh, Jenkins, but also with other systems you can use, um, especially the Docker image of Newman against Travis, uh, GitLabs, uh, Bitbucket. You can do um, the same thing within a different CI system. It's just this is showing you one way of doing it within Jenkins. So kind of like the We've just gone through this really quick module, mainly to uh, just show what Newman can do, especially with the collections you've got. You can export those and run them against the command line or push them into a, a CI system or a job runner. Um, we wanted to make that uh, a little bit more practical, but due to the restraints of getting everyone up to the same speed, I think it was a little bit more difficult. But again, we're here and we're able to uh, run through anything with yourselves on your machine and get you up to speed, or um, we can talk to anybody after uh, later or whatever. Yeah, yeah happy, happy to talk over some of these things, because uh, as Danny mentioned, like, if we had to get everybody to try and install Jenkins locally and Newman locally and all the dependencies around that, uh, we would probably be here till 10 o'clock tonight and you know, people want to go home. <laughs> or maybe you guys are just tired of listening to us yeah. talk. So, <laughs> no so we, want, you know, we did want to give you guys more hands-on, but it was just really uh, difficult to do something like that with such a large crowd. Um, we're happy that there's this much interest in it, though, so that's a win there. Uh, let's see, we have a question here. I have a question about the collection runner, right? Yeah, cool. Uh, so when you run, there are, there will be an instance where the output of one response needs, uh, some data in the output of some response needs to be fed to the input of the other response. So how do we do that? So you, you want to take like the output of data or a piece of data from a, a, a request and use it in the next one? Uh, a response of the one. Yeah. It's to, uh, I need it to be uh, passed on to the request of the second one. So you can, you can extract information from the response of one request, and it can be used later on in further requests. So you can use that doing like the pm.environment uh, variable setting. Um, it should be a pre-script, uh, pre... Uh, it, so it would be after the fact, so it would be, because you're taking the response for something, yeah. it will be in a test script. Okay. That's happened after the, the fight rather than the, before the, uh, the request has been sent. After the script run. Yeah, and you can take that and you can, like Trent said, you can use some of these uh, PM uh, environment dot set to set that, uh, that variable you want, and that could be anything, and then use a get to get that variable name because you set it in the environment. It's as long as the, yep. the thing is alive, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we actually had a question around that at the break as well. Yeah, and again, like there's multiple different different ways of doing things. And we can sit with you and just go for a, a basic example of you sh showing you how to do that within uh, a, request, a request within the, the UI or with the runner or any way you want. So yeah, we're, we're available to, to talk you through that or the people that are helping us out can do that. Thank you. I think that was the only question we had. Oh, we do have another one up front here. We'll wait till we get the mic just so we don't have to repeat the question. So while we're on the topic of uh, environment variables, what do you uh, say, what would you say are the benefits and drawbacks of using pm.environment versus pm.variables? Uh, the scope. So I don't know, you know, I think more about the scope than I do, do you? Like, um, so in like the pm.environment, it's available for 
you know, every request in that collection itself uh, against that environment, where local is specific to that request. So if you create data, say, in the pre-request tab, and you want to use it in the request or in the test tab, it's going to be local to that request only and never goes outside of that. Okay, thank you. No problem. Oh, we have another one back here. One question. Uh, how can developers uh, synchronize uh, the changes in the implementation with the changes in the test? So changes? Without, break, uh, without breaking the tests. Uh, yeah, so that kind of goes down to a, a what kind of plan you have. So uh, the free tier, um, basically there's no like uh, syncing or anything that you have uh, to be able to share, but if you go up to the Postman Pro, uh, plan and enterprise. You can then actually have workspaces where things will sync up and you can share workspaces with other teams or other members of your team. And so if you make a change or they make a change, those changes will sync up and sync back down again. Uh, do you mean the changes in the tests or also? Any, any portion of it, any, anything within that workspace. So whether it's the collection, you know, details around the collection, the folders, the tests, uh, the requests themselves, any, any change at all, they will sync up. Will it be synchronized with the changes in the source code? For example, the implementation of the API? The documentation? The implementation of the API. Oh, the implement. So when you say implementation, you mean? Uh, let's say I, I implement the API to, to return some value, and I write the test for this value to assert it, to expect it. Yes. Then other developer will change this value uh, to some different value. If okay. they commit and then they uh, have a pull request, let's say, in GitHub, for example, so, yeah. and the, te uh, the, the test will break. So how can the developer also change the test at the same time they change the implementation? Uh, so if they're making the changes in the request themselves, are you talking about they're, they're making the changes in the Postman application, like in the request and our pre-request, or are you talking about they make a change on the API itself that's uh, under test? The internal implementation of the API to return some value that is asserted by the test. Let's say my API endpoint returns one and I have some script that expects a one. And next time when I change this value to be two, then I also would want to, to replace this value to be two, the expectation in the test script in this okay. example. And if I uh, make only a change in the source code, then the CI CD, uh, when, when it runs the test, it will fail. Okay, so I see what you're saying there now. Um, so you'd have to go and explicitly make that change to the test to get that to sync up with it, right? Yes. Yeah. Theory. So there's, there's no way to, to keep those in sync uh, based on like, the implementation you're talking about, because you're talking about the changes happening in the source code of the service under test and you want to make sure, like I'm assuming the tests you're saying are going to live with um, this service that's under test, is that, or maybe we need to talk about it after because maybe I'm not totally understanding it. Uh, sure, we can discuss it. Later. Okay, yes. unless, I, yes. uh, unless I'm on the right track, but I feel like I'm maybe not totally understanding the, the full scenario. You're on the right track, I guess. <laughs> okay, yeah, we can, t we can talk about that a little bit later, but basically, yeah, um, if you have tests that live with the service under test, and if, something, if a change is made with that service, and you would basically need to make that change on the testing side as well, and it can be pushed up all at once, or they can be separate um, you know, pushes that are, are going to happen, but until the test is updated, obviously, it's going to continue to fail. So really, it just kind of depends on you know, if your developers are going to you know, make that update to the test or if that's on the quality side to update the test to match um, the changes that the development team has made. Um, yeah, so like in, in my practice, what would happen is if a change happened uh, to the service that is under test by the development team, uh, they would need to coordinate with me to make sure the tests uh, are updating to reflect that. But the good thing is if they made the wrong change, then uh, my tests are gonna fail, and I'm gonna look at it, because it's gonna alert me, right? And I'm gonna say, hey, how come this is failing, guys? And they're like, well, we changed this, and I'm saying, well, no, that's not the failure I'm seeing, I'm seeing something else. So they may have messed something else up on top of the change they're supposed to make. So there is definitely benefit to having things fail until you can follow up as the quality person and look at the changes they've made and update the test to match that. 
um, de you know, depending on, on how you, um, you know, execute those sorts of things and, and what kind of uh, process you follow. Okay, thanks. Thank you. A question here? Uh, so kind of following up on that and, and piggybacking off it, uh, as far as like versioning goes for my process, we put the, like, the exported JSON files are in our repo. Yep. So when we update our development code on a branch, we also update those JSON files. Yes. And so instead of reading a collection from like the API or somewhere else, we're reading that collection in the same branch. They, they live locally with yes. your service. Yep. Um, so that's what we're doing, but now that I'm hearing more about this, this workspace and collaboration with the team, is there a, a way to version control a like collaborated workspace so that if I, you know, I have the, the branch right and I've got, it's testing one way mm -hmm. and now I'm changing that, I wanna change the tests in my collection, but I don't wanna break the tests that are my dev line is looking at. Yes, so Postman has branching and versioning uh, strategies built into the application, and that's something we released, uh, I don't know, was six, six months? Yeah, we, we've uh, rolled that out you know, somewhat recently. It's not super new, but it's been, it's been out there for a while. So yeah, that would be the proper way. So you wanna make sure you know, your current tests, you know, say it's master or something that's in production, that those tests continue to execute that way and that they're not, you know, the changes on you know, beta or staging or something like that, it's branched uh, on the dev side of things and you want the test to match that. So if you're utilizing um, the branching and, branching and tagging strategy within Postman, you can use our API or you can also export them um, just like you normally would with a collection. So you can export them and they can live with those, those changes. So you know, say you branched off a master and it's you know, slash dev or whatever it may be. Those tests can be branched as well within the Postman application and then you can export those as well and have them live with that, uh, those changed those changes to the service itself. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Good. Cool. So we, we've added a break time in there, but we've run through that quite quickly. So yeah. I, I, does anybody want a break? No. Cool. No. Let's go. Okay. All right. So they're not tired to listen to us talk. Yeah. That's a good thing, I guess. Maybe. Or I just want to get out of here quicker. We can talk forever. So we're going to move on to uh, the third and final uh, section of what we, we want to talk about during this workshop, and that's to do with reporting. So there was a question uh, already around the reporting, and this is specifically to do with Newman. So we've seen Newman run countless times through uh, different GIFs, GIFs, however you want to say it, or um, through Jenkins, or uh, just general screenshots of things. Um, but we have the ability to uh, create different reports as well uh, with using Jenkins. But uh, why do we create reports? <laughs> That's a great question, Danny. I'm glad you asked it. Asked it because it's the next slide. <laughs> oh, well then why not? So yeah, for me, we create, uh, reports are created to communicate information, but this information uh, can differ from different people. So you know, my, my CEO doesn't want to hear about the bigger picture of everything. They want to kind of like know big numbers uh, about the thing that's happening. And a developer might want to know more granularity uh, about what's happening, especially within a request uh, that we're, we're running or a collection that we're running. Uh, so we can give them uh, to, to different people. And these reports can be tailored to different people as well and to a different audience. But um, the things that I bear in mind, especially when I'm creating a report, is I keep in mind who the intended audience is, uh, what the purpose of the report is. If you're just creating a report for a report and no one's going to read it, what's the point in creating a report? It just it makes no sense whatsoever. You're just gathering reports for no reason. Um, but also, uh, the, the type of information that is communicated is important for me when I'm creating reports or I'm using uh, that as a vessel to communicate information. So um, yeah, so we've seen um, with Newman, there are different reporter options. So one for the, the CLI, but um, there's also other options that come out of the box with Newman, um, which I want to kind of run through as well, which are created by Postman. So the CLI is the default reporter. If you don't specify the report to, uh, from the command line when you're running a collection using Newman, um, it's going to output that on, on the command line itself. But as well as that, it has different options to uh, manipulate what you're going to see. So maybe you don't want to see that big sub uh, big summary box at the bottom, or you want to see uh, just the failures or certain aspects of that, or you want to see a more verbose uh, report to do with the timings of the, the actual collection run. The CLI reporter has its individual set of arguments that you can pass in to get that information to see that on the command line. 
But as well as the CLI reporter, there's a JUnit reporter that's, uh, that's baked into it, which will produce an XML file, which can be used with things like Jenkins that um, Trent showed already. We didn't go through that uh, example, but it does create uh, an XML file that you can use with different plugins to say, uh, display the, the test coverage or uh, the historical runs, yeah, things like historical that. Run. Yep. So different things. So that's inbuilt with Newman itself. So you can just specify that as your reporter or specify both things. You can specify uh, multiple reporters at the same time. CLI, JUnit, or something else. But also there's a couple of other ones in there as well. So if, you just, if you're making uh, changes to your request in your collection and you want to update the link, like using one of the, um, the options that I showed you, how you can run Newman against a link that, that's updated, and you don't want to see the output, you don't want to see that summary output every time from the CI reporter, there's a progress bar that's in there as well. So you just specify this by using uh, the command uh, dash R and then the, the reporter name. In this case, we're using the progress. It's just a progress bar. It's just going to give you uh, an output of something going on, and then uh, the end result um, is going to be oh, it's 100% complete. But if you don't like progress bars, there's an emoji train in there. So everyone can hop on the, uh, the emoji train, and this will output um, uh, a smiley face for a good request. I think it's a bad face for a, a bad request, and then a, a, a smiley face with love hearts when it says, yeah, everything's cool. So they're, they're in there already. That's, that's just a kind of gimmicky one, but people want to see reports in different ways. They don't want to see everything uh, going on, and this is just a kind of like a comical uh, way of outputting the, what the, uh, the actual collection is doing. This is probably the best way, in my opinion, to do. I want to change it. Yeah. Change all the... All, uh, everything should be done this way. Change all the faces. Yeah. To trophies. <laughs> What was that? Sorry. Nope. No. Just a great comment. <laughs> if it's that good, we, we should share it with everybody. <laughs> I like sarcastic comment. Uh, yeah, so as well as um, the, the, the reporters that um, Postman's built within Newman, there's also um, the ability to extend it out to, uh, uh, to report against anything you want. So you mentioned Team City before. There is a community built reporter to report out to Team City, which you can pass in similar to the argument you saw um, with the progress. Uh, you can pass in the Team City, but these are independently downloadable NPM packages. So you can search for these. Um, the reporter names themselves, especially the community-based reporters, they need to follow a certain naming convention. So it needs to be Newman, dash reporter, dash, and then the report name. So you can go onto MPN if you, if you search that, and there's a link into uh, the GitHub where you can um, go straight to that. Uh, and you can see the different packages that are available. I think it's up to about 87 now, different packages. But they've been created to serve different use cases. So some, some things are, are created to uh, fill gaps that out-of-the-box reporters not, not giving you. So it might be a CSV output for a file. It might be something to do with Team City. It might be uh, to do with Test Rail as another test reporter. Or I think someone's created someone to create a, a Confluence page. So there's lots of different aspects um, uh, of things that people want to uh, create a report from or uh, they want to push a report to a certain place. And they, they have the ability within Newman to extend the functionality of the reporting aspect of it and create their own reporters to serve a certain, uh, certain purpose. So some of the other ones that are available, so um, uh, a community member has created a StatsD uh, reporter, which will output um, everything from the collection one from Newman uh, to StatsD. And StatsD can be uh, used with anything like Grafana, so you can start creating your own dashboards in whatever way. This is just a rubbish one that I created quite a while ago, but it's just um, exposing some of the data, and I'm not a kind of Grafana expert, by any means, so um, people can uh, create a more rich uh, uh, view of a dashboard. But as well as things like Grafana, it has its own inbuilt alerting system. So you can set alerting thresholds against certain things. I can use this to monitor your request and uh, your collections that you've created. But as well as the Slack D one, there's a Slack one. Uh, so someone's created a Slack reporter, which gives a kind of like a, just a, a representation about what has happened um, during that collection run that they've set off, maybe on their CI CD system. And it's pushed that um, notification that they've created from the reporter straight into a Slack message. This is kind of really poorly formatted, but you, know, you can manipulate that to uh, produce anything you want. You can even have emojis in it. You can have emojis, yeah. You can have whatever you want. <laughs> or not, because they're rubbish. Um, so I want to uh, demo in a minute a couple of uh, reporters. So um, Newman has, uh, it did have the ability to create an HTML report. Um, that was extracted out to its own separate project. 
um, and now uh, you'd have to download that individually. So it's a, a, a NPM package again that you'd specify Newman reporter HTML, and that will give you an output, uh, a HTML output report of what's actually happened within that collection. So we'll switch, so we'll switch to demo. Over. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. So that. Well, that looks it looks ugly, which is a good thing for me. Um, so the standard HTML report, it's it, it's a bit. It gives you the information about what's what's happened within the collection. It's very kind of high level. It's um, it's telling you kind of what's happened in the iterations, the test script, the assertions, any failures. You can then. Um, uh, output things that's happened on the actual request itself. So if there's any uh, description that's added, the, the method, the URL, any timings, uh, also with any tests and, and anything else that's happened within that request. But it looks a bit, it looks a bit rubbish to me. And the reason why I say it's rubbish, because I, I created a different reporter because I wanted to um, kind of pimp this out a bit. And because Newman uh, gives you the ability to extend certain things and create reporters for yourself, I had a go, because I, I had a project uh, that I wanted to um, integrate a reporter into, and, and this was the um, reporter that I chose, the HTML reporter. And how many times has it been downloaded? Far too many. Um, so I, 100,000, by the way. So I created a, a different reporter. For, to give people a different, um, uh, a different view of the HTML report, it's, the HTML report is heavily downloaded from a Postman point of view, but I, I feel there's more information within that collection and that run that you can expose out to a HTML report. And this report could be given to anybody within your company or anybody at whatever level, and it will expose details about the collection run that you might want to uh, expose that the other HTML reporter doesn't do. So I kind of made uh, a different reporter, which is called uh, HTML Extra, which is um, just a kind of different take on the HTML uh, report, which, from a zoomed-in point of view, it looks it doesn't look good. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's a that's a bug fix. Um, but it exposes some of the the same data, but just in a more kind of like, uh, hopefully a more uh, user-friendly and looking uh, better-looking way. Um, so this is just a, a, a sample report that's hosted. Um, uh, on an S3 bucket that you can just go and interact with. Again, this link is on the, the GitHub repo, so you can just click into it yourself and have a look and interact uh, from, from where you are sitting. But this essentially just kind of like, it, it branches, I want to zoom out a bit because I look ugly. Um, it, it exposes some of the data that um, I wanted to expose because I wanted to serve a certain purpose within my, my company. And I made it kind of a, a little bit more interactive. So a lot of the features that were missing from uh, the HTML report, like uh, specifying different iteration runs. The standard HTML report aggregates everything together. So you've had multiple iteration runs, you're not going to see that information. It's just going to be sp sploshed all together in a one big scrollable uh, uh, single page. But I wanted to expose that out to, to have uh, different iterations. So this, it can't see much of a change here, but this is just flipping between iteration one, iteration two. Um, I've put kind of different indicators on here to uh, tell you kind of a high level whether a request has actually failed or, or passed within a folder. So you can see um, I've got four folders running here, and um, if I open them up, they've got individual requests within them. So you can then just go into these individual requests and then see the kind of the more richer picture data uh, that's actually happened uh, on, that, on that particular request within the collection. And this exposes things like uh, the normal stuff with the, the request headers, um, uh, the, the URL, the method, the timings, uh, but also things like request headers, the response headers, um, the, the response body, also the request body if it has one. This is a get request, it doesn't happen. But also uh, any tests that are run. So it's a kind of like a tabletized uh, version of the, the thing that was there before. It's a bit more interactive. But because um, you have the ability to skip test in Postman, and the old reporter didn't possess this ability to tell you that. So my reporter that I've created gives you the ability to actually tell you whether any test within the collection has been skipped already as well. So you can, you can click through this um, where, you, where you're sitting, and there's lots of different things uh, available. This is just one aspect of the reporter. Um, there's lots of different uh, other features available within there. You could, there's a, a really sweet dark mode that Paul loves. And uh, there's, there's just different things. If you want to only show the failures, you can show the failures. If you want to expose some of the console logs that you have in your request, there's another argument to show those. Uh, if, there's lots of different things, but if you check out the HTML extra uh, repo, the uh, readme on there will show you different aspects of, of what you can do in a report. And there's lots of cool things where you can expose things. But um, this is written in a, uh, with my own coding ability in mind. 
So this is as good as I can make it, given my experience. Um, it's, it's a bit gnarly sometimes. If you've got large collections, if you've got 5,000 iterations, there's, for me, there's no real, I don't see any purpose. It comes back to the purpose of report. I don't see a really real need to give a, a report of this size of 5,000 collections to someone. Or are you going to give that to someone? How much information do you want? And you can, uh, you can, you can reduce it down as much as you want, but things, uh, the report will only get bigger because it's a static file, essentially. So every, every other request you make or every other iteration you add to it, the file will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can uh, have strategies in place to reduce the size and zip the file or anything you need to do, but essentially it's a static file. It is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And once the file gets bigger, it's bloody hard to open. And I'd love to uh, solve that. And if anybody here can solve that for me, that would be great. So if, uh, you can send a full request. So that's just like showing another uh, reporter, and it, it gives you an idea that you are able to create these reporters. If there's a reporter that hasn't been created yet, and you want to um, solve a certain uh, use case for your own context, you can have a go and create the reporters. On the Newman repo, there's a section that gives you abilities of how to create a reporter. So it's a very small code snippet, and it, you don't really need uh, much effort to create a reporter, which you can then uh, either publish locally or publish up to NPM, and you can use it in your own local uh, Newman instance really easily. There's lots of different things I can tell you about this reporter, obviously because I, I, I made it, but um, there's also things that I can uh, help you with if you want to create a reporter um, for yourself or, or anything else. Uh, Jeff, sorry, you have a question? What about editing reporters? The reporters that have been created? So for my use case, the, we use the JUnit reports because we're in Jenkins, and Jenkins does a lot of that reporting for us, so we get all our graphs and our charts and things. But the JUnit report is absolutely garbage at breaking things down by like folders in a collection. Yep. So if I run you know, one folder that happens to have the same test name as the next folder, now I just have a list of all these similarly named tests with no organization to them at all because the JUnit just dumps the XML files and it doesn't, it doesn't track the folder level interaction between those tests. How might I edit that or fix that or so that get seems someone like, else to fix yeah, that? Yeah, so, so there is, um, so sure. because, because it's a community, uh, a large community out there, I think someone's had the same problem and they've created a reporter for that particular use case. So there's a, there's a JUnit uh, report, I think, J, JUnit full or JUnit something, which will um, take probably some of the, the things that you find uh, annoying and have probably solved those problems already. Or you can uh, submit uh, a request to, to get those things changed. We kind of talk through what, what you'd like to change. But I think people have kind of like got to the point where, you know what, I can just create my own reporter, and uh, I will. And then, then you have full control over what it, it outputs, like I've done. I, I wanted to output a certain thing, so I gave myself control to do that. Or I could have submitted a million pull requests to uh, the HTML reporter, but you know, the, the how, when would they get actioned? I, I wanted to take the control of the, the reporter itself and do that. And I think people have done that for JUnit and a lot of the other reports out there. Um, where they've got, uh, they forked a certain thing because the, the, even community reporters forking community reporters. There's, there's different, there's so many different things you can do with it. The data, the underlying data is the same. Way, the way you show it, the way you manipulate that or what you want to show it in, that's up to you. Like the, you, you're, you're open to, to change whatever you, you want really. And you have the code. If it's an NPM, NPM package, you can change anything locally and you can manipulate whatever. If you have, you know, the kind of JavaScript knowledge behind that, but um, you have the code locally with, with all those changes in there. You can, you can output whatever, and you can use it just locally within your company, or, or, or republish another reporter. So it's completely up to you. Good question, though. So, so learn Node, or, or just use something else. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, use something else. Switch back to the slides. Yeah, so that was super quick. I mean, the reporting aspect of, of Newman uh, is, is a kind of like uh, underutilized thing, in my opinion. I think you have the ability to output uh, any report uh, that you want, if you want to create it, or there's something available. But all these reporters can be tied into like, things like Jenkins, or um, like I mentioned, other CI systems. Like I've got 
uh, a bit a bit bucket, pipe, bit bucket pipeline, which creates a, an artifact of a reporter from Jenkins, and I've got that that held there because it runs my collection against a certain API, and then it creates an output of that report that I wanted. Or I could just um, use a Slack reporter or any other way that I want to report a certain thing. But Newman has the ability to do that. Um, there's more information on the actual uh, Newman repo that you can you can utilize, but also, we're here, and the, the Postman team's here, to, to help you out and uh, to, um, to allow you to do the thing that you want to do. Wow. To the end. This is very... All the transitions. Non-responsive. There we go. So, let's kind of review a little bit about what we've covered in this whole workshop here. <clears throat> So we have covered utilizing Postman to help you gain confidence that your tests are effective and remove some of the manual process from testing your APIs, which is one of the key things. Postman has uh, many, many, many great built-in features, libraries, utilities, functions, things like that, um, that allows you to create tests to best suit all of your application. Uh, using, Postman, using the Postman application, uh, we've demonstrated how uh, you can quickly create uh, tests and, and get up and running very effect effectively. Uh, you can utilize Newman uh, as well to easily extend and integrate your tests uh, into your CI CD pipelines. And there are plenty of different reporting options available to you both in and out of the box. Uh, and you are free to create uh, whatever you feel works best for you. Um, which is really, really nice. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> so this is a recommended resources uh, slide. Um, I think we mentioned it before, but we did put uh, this presentation up in the GitHub repo. Uh, so you'll have this slide there. Uh, I don't know if everybody knows that we have a Postman community, so it's just community.getpostman.com. Uh, we also have a really great learning center that we have actually been putting a ton of time and effort into uh, recently. Uh, so there's lots of great updated information uh, in the new learning center. We also have a GitHub repo, um, and, and in here lives uh, a bunch of things to do with Postman. Uh, we have like stuff like the reporters uh, and any other open source uh, code, but we also, the main thing is we have our Postman app support in there. So if you're looking for uh, a feature request, uh, you want to know uh, if there's a bug that exists or if you want to log a bug or anything like that, um, head on over there, do a quick search. First, before you try and log anything, um, there should be hopefully lots of great updated information there. We try and uh, keep on top of it uh, as much as possible and provide as much information back to the community. Um, one of the things I always loved about Postman uh, before I came here was the level of transparency um, that the Postman team has. Uh, so we're, you know, we try and be very open and frank with uh, our user base, uh, so everybody knows what's going on. We're not trying to hide anything or keep anything behind the scenes. So that's a great place to gather information. We also have uh, a really great support portal, uh, and this is like a great place to start if you run into funny issues. I think like I've seen a lot of people ask questions about like, oh, I have Windows and I install it, and this is what happens. There's like great articles on there for things like that. And then also we've included uh, just kind of a keep in touch uh, section. So if you want to reach out to uh, myself or Danny, you can find us LinkedIn, uh, Twitter. Uh, you know, uh, we are on the uh, Postman community, we're on the GitHub repo, we're all over the place. So if you guys uh, want to follow up with us at, you know, after today, after the conference, things like that, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we try and you know, respond as quickly as possible, uh, but we'd love to hear from you guys, you know, even if you just want to say you enjoyed or really thought this sucked, I don't know. But feel free. All feedback welcome. Or just feedback. You sucked. Yeah, exactly. If you go, can we go back one? So I, oh, sure. decide, so I would recommend, so lots of people have lots of questions about stuff, and it's really hard to, um, uh, to, to know uh, what you're doing in Postman, because it can be confusing. It was confusing to me when I started. Um, some things are still confusing to me. But I, I spend a lot of time in the, the, the Postman community um, just answering questions, because I've, I've been at the point where um, 
I've had so many questions, but I've had nobody to ask. So I'm kind of asking myself, which is quite weird. But I can post the questions on a community, and the, the people on there are awesome. And they come back to you really quickly, and they'll give you a use case. Or there might be a resource on there already where someone's asked the same question. And it's that kind of the, the repository of questions where you can, you can search through, uh, and you can get an answer really quickly. And it, I totally recommend, if you haven't joined it or you haven't been on there, just have a look on there. It's, it's so good. And the, I think one of the, the functions I mentioned before, uh, earlier on before, were clearing out environment variables. I tried to uh, create a thread to have these kind of like shared tips and tricks. Mm. And there's lots of things on there that um, we haven't mentioned today because we kind of rattled through lots of things in a short space of time. But I wanted to expose some of those different things you can do within Postman. And uh, lots of them are on there. So yeah, totally check it out. And I totally recommend going on there. Yeah, and to add to to that as well, we do have like um, you know uh, champions, uh, Postman champions that are not Postman employees that are extremely helpful uh, in the community. I think some of them are actually in here, um, but like they're going to be out there. They're going to help you answer these questions. Uh, they're always posting uh, articles and things to answer common questions or problems uh, that people have or uh, have run across and they want to share information with everybody. So um, that's another great thing as well. No, no question is a. Stupid question. Every, everyone doesn't know how to do everything. So, I mean, I, I would rather ask a question and get a, a quick reply, think, oh, yeah, of course it's that, uh, than just sit and, and low over the fact that I've got, oh, God, I'm, I'm going through such a bad time at the moment because I don't know how to do a thing. And, uh, yeah, just post a question, and hopefully we can, we can help you out. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of rehash here, the workshop resources... Um, which I guess kind of creates a bit of a circle because it's hosted, the slides are hosted there. Um, but Basically, that's a GitHub repo. Uh, just go to GitHub, don't uh, go to that. So you've all got that, hopefully you've got that now. Um, but eventually that will work again, I think it will, but I guess with uh, 100 people trying to hear at the same time uh, and the level of uh, access that I've given it is, uh, is is pretty low. But yeah, all the resources that we've mentioned, so some of the things about the, uh, the inbuilt stuff, the uh, Lodash moment, uh, the API sandbox reference page, which is an awesome page, and totally check it out. And it will give you the ability to do things in the pre-request script, the test script. Um, but also things like uh, some of the reporter stuff that I mentioned, the Newman repo. Uh, and I think I'll probably add some more stuff on there, mainly around API testing generally and what you can test for. Because there's lots of different mnemonics out there which will give you an idea about how to start doing a certain thing. Starting from nothing and seeing what things you can uh, check within uh, an API and things that are important. But I wanna, I'll, I'll continue to add things on there. So it won't be just for, the, um, for today. It will be a, an ongoing resource that I'll, I'll just continue to add stuff to. And so this is basically the end of it. Um, definitely appreciate everybody's time sitting there listening to us kind of drone on for the past two and a half, three hours now. Um, I know it's kind of been a bit of a slog and we covered a lot of information. We definitely appreciate it. Hopefully everybody has learned something or is, take, is able to take something away. And if you have any questions, you know, uh, feel free to come find us. I did also want to mention, and I know Lisa's gonna mention as well. Um, so we're having a pre, a pre post con party slash meetup at our uh, postman office at 535 Mission Street. Uh, so, you know, come in for some food, a beer, and... Uh, tacos. You know, tacos, yes, tacos. Uh, and, you know, I look forward to talking to anybody that has any questions or they want to just chat. And also, like, keep an eye out for anybody um, wearing a postman postcon shirt, because I'm sure they love to talk to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers.